Welcome to video 10 in a series of introductory videos for SolidCam. This video's topic is the 3D milling toolpath. You can access the 3D milling toolpath by right-clicking on the operations folder, add milling operation, 3D milling. Best way to understand what 3D milling toolpath is, it's essentially a 3D version of the pocketing toolpath that you saw in video five. So a lot of the parameters are the same. The only difference here is 3D milling is a target-based toolpath, meaning that the geometry for this toolpath is going to be the target that we defined at the beginning of this file, the one that we did that you saw in uh, video one or video three of this series. Okay, so let's go to tool. I'm just gonna basically just choose my half-inch tool. As a 3D milling toolpath, three-dimensional version of the pocketing toolpath, we need to provide feeds and speeds for it. So we do that like we always do with our toolpath. Under levels, the levels in a, in a uh, target-based toolpath are not how much of the part we're gonna machine, but how much of the target we're gonna look at. So I'm actually telling it to look at the whole target from that Z level to that Z level. In the technology section, we have similar parameters to the, to the regular pocketing operation, but in this case, we're looking at it in more of a three-dimensional sense, meaning that once I switch roughing from none to contour, I have my overlap, or in this case, you can think of it as a step over percentage, and step down, 0.2. Um, now, this will take care of all the vertical material. Uh, what happens when it encounters the flats? Let's say the steps along my part there. Well, I can decide to either do the steps uh, not to do the steps at all, or I can clean up those faces either during the roughing or after the roughing. All this really means is that if that step down doesn't coincide with one of those steps, it's going to leave more material than uh, than what I'm um, telling it to do in my floor offset. But this will add a step in there just to clean up those faces uh, either before or during the toolpath. And just jumping ahead here, we have the wall and floor offset. Again, we're doing a roughing operation. And it breaks down the rest of the parameters in three buttons here. So under Z entry, we can tell it what kind of entry we're gonna do. In this case, I'm gonna say, let's do a helical with an angle of five and a radius, let's say, of 0.2. Okay, under mode, similar to what you saw in the pocketing toolpath, we have the same sort of thing here. I can tell it to generate a toolpath in a, in a pocketing toolpath, meaning that it'll continue to do that, that uh, that option that I chose up there, in this case, the contour, or it can generate a toolpath that looks more like a profile toolpath. And again, to see how those two work, take a look at video five where I showed it how it works in the 2D toolpath. Uh, the only other thing in this window I want is to tell it that if there is an open pocket, let's say the outside edge of my part, I'm gonna approach from the outside. So click okay on that. And under data, this is essentially the parameters for whatever type I chose. So in this case, I chose contour. So these are the contour parameters. I'm gonna tell it to approach from the outside or start from the outside in this case. And inside of the toolpath, if it, if it reaches a corner, let's see in the bottom left corner, you can see there that it's actually gonna do a 90 degree turn once it reaches a corner inside the toolpath. I can, tell, I can tell it to either do maybe a fillet at that corner. And again, if you look at the bottom left corner, it now has kind of a rounded filleted edge there for the corner. I can tell it to do a loop, or I can tell it to do a sharp. Loop and sharp are really only there so that um, it doesn't leave a cusp behind when it does that 90 degree turn. So I'll just click okay on that. I could add a finish, a semi-finishing pass and a finishing pass with the same tool meaning that it'll use the same tool, rough and finish in the same thing. Uh, and then under link, we have our lead and lead out. I'm just gonna leave those as is and save and calculate. So it does a calculation, it slices up that target using the Z level. And what we see here is a series of basically pocketing operations. If we look at it from the top, it still has that same racetrack look to it and it has done the entire part. If we actually do a solid verify on that, we'll see that this single toolpath with that single tool has done the whole part. And it's done the step downs that I put in there. And it's actually cleaned all those faces as well. So the whole thing is done with that same toolpath. Much as you've seen in the pocketing toolpath or some of the other target-based toolpaths, we have the rest option. So if I open this back up, do a save and copy. So now we're looking at a second 3D milling toolpath. I'm gonna to go to tool and choose a smaller tool. So I'm just gonna step down the tool to a quarter inch tool. 
going to my technology section, and I'm going to engage the REST option. So th what this will do is it'll actually analyze the part, once I click Save and Calculate, based off of this parameter here. So I went to the Data tab under REST Material, and I'm going to need to tell it the previous tool. So off the top of my head, if I don't remember which what the size of the tool was, I happen to do know that it was Tool 1. So if I click on Tool 1, it just gives us that radius right, or that, uh, that diameter right there. Wall offset, the previous wall offset, I believe, was 20 thou. We're going to tell it to do a one-way contour strategy. Save and calculate. Again, it analyzes the part for the areas where that previous tool that I just defined could not cut. In this case, it's going to be all the corners. And that is my rest milling operation, similar to what you've seen in the 2D version of this tool, 2D pocketing. Whereas 3D milling is basically the 3D version of the pocketing operation. So once again, it's uh, this is the 3D version of that pocketing. If you have any other questions on this particular toolpath or any other toolpath you see in the series of videos, you can call us back at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2, and we can help you out in a go-to meeting looking at your part. Otherwise, stay tuned for the rest of the videos where we cover other topics from SolidCam. Thank you for watching.